All right, back to the geometry. So you're gonna start right here. Fat guy's 148. That is also 148. This must be 148, and this must be 148. So you got four of them. The other ones are gonna be 180 minus 148. So they're gonna be 32. They're all gonna be 32, the little skinny ones, but you can stop right here because you got what you need. You know that this angle has to be 148. So your algebra is gonna be this, 6x minus 32 has to equal 148. So what does x have to be for that to be true? Just plus 32, plus 32. So you're gonna have 6x equals um, 180. So, divide by 6, divide by 6, x should be 30. Alright, x has to be 30. Done. Number 7. Okay, you're going to start right here. That's 84, that's 84, that's 84, that's 84. Those four angles are congruent. The other ones are going to be 180, take away 84. So it's going to be 96. So that would be 96. That would be 96. That would be 96. That would be 96. Okay, you're going to use this data right here. You're going to say 7 times the quantity x minus 19 has to equal 84. And now it should be a comfortable algebra problem. Um, you can distribute the 7. So you can go 7 times x, 7 times a minus 19, um, do that on my calculator, 7 times a negative 19, negative 133, equals 84, so now plus 133, plus 133, you're going to have 7x equals 7, 217. Divide by 7, divide by 7, 217, divide 7. X should end up at 31. Alright, number 8 is quite a bit different than 6 or 7. It's a little more challenging. So 8, I would do this. You got to figure out if those angles are supplementary or are they congruent. Make up your own. Let's say that's 100. Let's say that's 80. Because those are such easy numbers. 180. 180. 180. Okay, those are parallel. So if you look at those, these two angles are consecutive interiors. They're in the middle. They're on the right-hand side. They would be these two right here. So what do you know about those two angles? Those two angles, they are not congruent. They are supplementary. So your algebra is going to be this. You're going to take the top angle, 5x minus 25. And you're going to take the bottom angle, 3... Let me do this. You're going to add them together. So I'm going to add them horizontally. 5x minus 25. Add 3x plus 9. So if I add those together, my answer has to be 180. Okay, now let's do your like terms. 5x and 3x, so you got 8x total, and then your constants. What's 25 negatives and 9 positives? So negative 25 plus 9, you're going to have negative 16. Okay, so that's what you got. Add 16. Add 16. So you've got 8x equals 196, divide by 8, divide by 8, 196, divide 8. We're getting a decimal, 24 and a half. So don't be scared just because you get a decimal. That's okay. All right. Quadratic. So, um... Move number one, get everything on the same side. Solve for P, it's the same as finding roots, same as find the solutions. You're going to have to probably use the quadratic formula. I'm going to move 
this over to the left because then it will keep my p squareds positive so I'm gonna add 11 p squared add 11 p squared and you're gonna have 6p squared minus 19p plus 5 equals negative 9p plus 9p plus 9p 6p squared minus 10p plus 5 so the most important thing is you have got to get your a b and c correct so if you are wrong on a b or c from there on out you're wrong so a is 6 b is negative 10 c is 5 maybe glance it over to see if there's anything that jumps out you did wrong okay now let me erase and let's start plugging it into the quadratic formula so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Okay, here's where you're going to mess up. If that's not in parentheses and you punch it on the calculator, it's going to give you a wrong answer. Then you'll be wrong from here out. b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay, so going to clean up to be 10 plus or minus. Okay, this whole square root, just punch it in exactly how you've got it written down all on one command. Press enter. Negative 10 squared. And that should give you negative 20. Then on bottom, you've got 12. Alright. Um... Okay, your eyeballs have to go right here. This is kind of a huge red flag. Anytime you got the square root of a negative, your next move should be this. 10 plus or minus imaginary square root of 20 divide 12. So take the imaginary out, and then it's going to be a positive 20. Just put the imaginary right next, right in front of the square root. Okay, now you got to ask yourself about this square root of 20 square root of 20 you can pull some stuff out 4 times 5 2 times 2 times 5 square root of 2 squared times 5 so if you break 20 to its prime factors you should get 2 squared times 5 since it's a square root you gotta have 2 or more to pull stuff out so the 5's stay put but you're gonna pull a 2 out so square root of 20 is going to become 2 times the square root of 5. So let's substitute this in place of the square root of 20. So it's going to be 10 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 5 all over 12. Get out to fraction. It's kind of a souped up fraction. But anytime, if you were, so let me make up a fraction. If you were to come across like uh, 8 twelfths you gotta simplify it. Divide them both by something they have in common. Divide them both by four and you're gonna get two thirds. So you always wanna simplify your fractions. This fraction, you look at this number, this number, and this number, and they all have something in common. You can divide them all by two. So your best and final answer is gonna be five plus or minus. Two divided by two is just one i. Square root of five, 12 divided by 2 is 6. This is it. And don't worry about showing this on a number line. That's more of an honors thing. So let's pass on showing this on a number line. Okay, if you're given the roots, can you write the equation? So your answer is x equals 5 and a negative 3. So they're integers. They're nice whole numbers, they're easy, they're slick, so here we go. You're going to use this. So if you plug a 5 in, in place of x, you want to make it be a 0. So it's going to be x take away 5. Because if I put in 5, and then I subtract 5, there is my 0. And 0 times whatever that is, is going to be 0. And if I plug in a minus 3 for x, 
I know that my operation has to be plus three. Because when I minus three and plus three, I get zero. So there you go. There's your first move. Second move is just distributive property. X times X is X squared. X times 3 is going to be 3X. Negative 5 times X. Negative 5X. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Combine your like terms. X squared minus 2X minus 15. This is your answer in standard form. So standard form is just ax squared plus bx plus c, everything on the same side. So, not too bad. Okay, just a few weeks ago, this is where we left off. So, you're given two functions, a function called g and a function called h. They want you to take negative 1 and first sub it into h. So you're going to go 2. There's my x. You're going to sub in place of x and negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 2. There we go. If I do that, I should get a negative 4. Now, take that answer, your new answer, negative 4, and put it into g. So g... So here's G, I'm going to take it over here. It's going to be whatever I plug in cubed minus 2 times whatever I plug in squared. So I'm going to plug in a negative 4 and a negative 4. Okay, a negative 4 cubed is a negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. That's going to be a negative 64. So I got a negative 64 minus 2 times... 16. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So it's going to be negative 64 minus 32. And it should be a negative 96. And that's your final, final answer. Okay, you're looking at a graph. First, take 9 and plug it into F. So you're going to start here at 0, 0, always a 0. Go over 9. F is my top one, so right there. How far up did I have to go to hit F? I had to go 3. So my answer, right there, this is a 3. So now take your answer and plug it into G. So you start back at 0, 0. Go right 3, go down till you hit G. This time I gotta go down right there. And you could say that's probably a negative 2. Okay, now this whole mess is a negative 2. So take negative 2 one last time into G. So go back 0, negative 2. So go left 2, and you have to go down to about right there. So it's almost at a negative 2, maybe like a negative 1.75. Something really, really close to negative 2. Okay, this graph is going to be vertex form. So it's going to be y equals x minus h squared plus k. Now, I know this, since it's uh, upside down, I know there has to be a negative in front of here. So, y equals a negative, x, here is the point that you're interested in, the vertex. You went right 3, and then you went down 1. So, it's going to be negative 3 plus 1. The number inside the parentheses, this guy right here, tells you to move it left or right. If it's negative, you go to the right. So if it would have been like y equals x plus 3, and make sure you got this in your notes. If it would have been plus 3, So the difference would be this guy right here. So let me draw a grid real quick. So in front of the parentheses is positive, so I know it's going to open up. Plus 3 tells you to move to the left 3. 
and then plus one is up one right there would be your vertex and it would open up so this would look like this picture but the negative flips it down the minus three shifts it three to the right and this is wrong it's not plus one because we went three to the right but then we went down one we didn't go up one so the down one has got to be minus one so this is your answer right there but this one right below so the plus one moves it up one okay this is the exact same as g of n subtract f of n all they want you to do is take the rule of g which is a minus 3n plus 2 I'm gonna put that in parentheses then subtract so put a subtract sign take the rule of f which is n minus 1 put that in parentheses and add and subtract problems all you do is combine like terms so I'm going to subtract both of these terms so I'm going to rewrite the problem. I'm going to go minus 3n plus 2, but then it's going to subtract the n, and it's going to subtract the negative 1, which is really the same as plus 1. So these are your like terms. A negative 3n and a negative 1n should total for a negative of 4n. A 2 and a 1 should total for a 3, and that is your answer. You're done. last one a multiplication problem all they want you to do is take f here's f 3x plus 4 multiply it to g which is x squared minus x now multiplication problem you have to do the distributive property so you got to multiply this guy to this so it's going to be 3x cubed so when you times your letters you add the exponents this is going to be a negative 3x squared this one's going to be 4x squared, and this is going to be a negative 4x. Combine your like terms if you can. You're going to have 3x cubed plus 1x squared minus 4x, and you are done.